The race card is an important source of information, whether you're a horse racing newbie or an expert. Though it's called a race card, the reality is that the information on the day's racing is usually contained in something more resembling a booklet, even a newspaper. And these days, not in hard copy form at all, but digitally and online. Whilst race cards provide a wealth of information, particularly for those who enjoy the study of form, we asked those in the industry what, in their opinion, were some of the factors not to be overlooked, and even for some tips when it came to assessing a card. Uh, you know, it's an interesting question because some of us who've actually been to the races a lot yeah. uh, and for many years sometimes miss things as well. Yeah. But it's important not to get lazy and not skim over things because if you are putting your money down, I suppose a lot of serious punters will, but like your question alluded to, for those that aren't really serious and, and come in um, irregular or maybe for, first, for the first time, it's very, very important to go from left to right on the race card, the computer form or the winning form or whatever um, uh, method they use to study form or to you look at the race card. The, the information on the race card, for instance, tells you from left to right the course that it ran at last time. That's very important because the horse might have been running in a weaker centre. Yeah. That'll tell you that the horse is coming from Port Elizabeth or from Kimberley. Be important to know that because its form might look good in one column but if you see where it ran it might help you a lot in terms of that. And then the other thing is the date that it ran. Now, if horses hasn't had a run for a long time or possibly maybe had a lot of runs in a short time, that's important to notice, to, 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 to take note of. The, the vision that it ran in, in this case I'm looking at also it ran in a Meritrade at 86 then down to an 80 and now it's up to an 86 again. So that gives you a guide of what sort of quality the horse is effective over, you know, the type of um, race that it will be effective over. It's very important to look at the rating. The distance is extremely important is, you know, because horse might have had its best form in the race card over 16, 18, 2000 and you see second, second, second or, and then all of a sudden you don't notice that it's running over 1000 metres. So the distance is very important. We move on to the jockey. Uh, the jockey in, the, in, in this case here yeah, we've had Anton Marcus on the horse twice and then we've gone down to an apprentice claiming and then we've gone to Musien and we're back to the apprentice claiming 4 kilos. So obviously the trainer feels he needs the, the, the weight advantage. Um, so one's got to uh, look at the form see which jockeys were on it when it ran well and ask yourself um, if the jockey on it is up to that standard and so that'll help you assess the horse in this particular race with that rider on as well. It's very important to notice the rider, the previous riders, where the horse ran with those riders on, the weights that it carried and the merit rating is very important. So we move to the next column in brackets, it's previous merit ratings. In this case the horse uh, won a race and got a three point penalty, then ran second got another one point penalty and then got a five point, uh, four point penalty. So it's gone up from where it won at a merit rating of 87 and it's now running with a merit rating of 93. Um, and look at the divisions it ran over in this division. Very, very important to see you know, if it's going to be effective in this race with, uh, in that division with that weight. Very important before we get to the draws is AAA or AS for steels or Alamites. So if a horse has been running in steels or Alamites, very, very important to see that it might be an Alamite change from steels. That'll make a difference. And also the next column tells you the draws, where it ran its previous races, over what draws, what draws did it have. Then we move to the position that it finished, the lengths behind. The horse that it ran behind is very informative, but if you're a person that doesn't go to the races much, you won't know what that horse is. And then of course we, we go to the times, which isn't critical, and maybe the betting, which isn't hugely critical either. Times for me aren't a huge factor, they're a, they're a guide, but in South Africa the jockeys go different paces every time they run. Whereas in America they go flat out in every race, so you get an indication of times more consistently than here. So a sprint race will be a better indication of times, but once they go over 1400 times very uh, dramatically, so times isn't a big factor for me in South Africa. But what I've mentioned along that line going across, I think it's very important for the hunter out there to look at the whole line across and just breeze through it, checking those key factors, where it ran, the distances, the, the jockey, the merit rating, the weights and the draws. And that'll help somebody that really doesn't know a, a lot about the race card. Those few pointers that I've highlighted there will help anybody to try and decipher the strength of horse in the race. Gavin, if somebody doesn't have much time, where do they look? Exactly along those lines. It won't take much longer than five minutes to breeze through every horse in every race, just going through at a quick glance like that. It's money. Money is expensive today, and so it is worth the, the effort. What better way to make sure that you and your friends are up to speed 
then now, ahead of South Africa's greatest race day, the Vodacom Durban July. They're not the easiest things to read, to be honest. But, uh, you know, draws for me at the tracks are, are very important. It just uh, puts the odds in your favour. You know, if a horse has got a half-decent draw, it helps. Gravel is a track that uh, people need to take cognizance of, of draw, which is, is probably a primary uh, concern. The shorter distances, closer to the turn, you want to look at the draw. You want horses to be drawn in the first seven. Um, outside of that, uh, you've got to bounce and go if you're placing up there. Whereas if you're close to the rail, you're there for nothing and uh, you can set the horse into a good position and, and be in a striking position turning for home. I think those are critical. I think you also have to also then look at jockeys in form, trainers in form, uh, which does sort of point you in the, in the right direction. That's another thing, I, I would follow the trainers, the, the, the trainers that consistently run at you know, 15-20% uh, strike rates and jockeys, but certainly follow the top jockeys. Now the top jockeys pick the best rides, they get offered the best rides. So you look at the race card, you see Anton Marcus, you know, that's a horse that, if, I mean he runs at like 70% chance of running a place and 30% chance of winning. Uh, that's where I like to put my odds. Another point it might be if a jockey retains the ride, having, having ridden the horse and run fifth, he obviously then knows the horse better. And clearly the horses form in the lead up to, to all their races on, on July day. I, I like to see by the time that July um, is run, by the time that you know, we're at that big day, I like to see a horse that's had a few runs in the season already. It's not its second run or perhaps first run after race. It's had a, a good couple of prep runs and it's hard and fits and ready to, to give a a full account of, of, of his or her ability. It's nice to compare the horse's age amongst others in the field to see perhaps um, you know, three-year-olds often they might be a bit less mature, a bit less hardened on a big day and um, they might lack the experience that an older horse might have. And then obviously you know uh, uh, how long ago did it last have a run? Uh, but. <laughs> I try to, I, I'm a bad trainer to follow like that because I bring them out ready. In the computer form underneath the selections is a heading headed equipment changes and underneath that there are a couple of ratings. I, I take a bit of note of the speed ratings. It's a critical column Michelle. Um, you know, a horse that's been heavily penalised um, in its last couple of, of runs, it, it, might, it might not have established itself from the rating that it's running off. So perhaps it was a 70, it got, got bumped up to a 78, to an 84, perhaps now it's even a 90. The chances are slight that the horse is going to be able to perform well off that 90, for an example. But if a horse three or four runs ago was a 90 and it's dropped perhaps to an 80, something like that, you, you, know, you, you should consider it as, as a horse that is now in, in a weaker race and should be more competitive. So the, the ratings often have a big say in the outcome of a race. Obviously the draw would be an issue and a factor, however if a horse is um, a speedy horse and is well rated in the speed ratings, perhaps it's got a, a better opportunity and chance of overcoming the draw and getting a, a decent position. Another thing that I, I look at when it comes to feature races is that uh, if it's going to be the horse's second run or his third run, I honestly do believe that horses come back from a break and they run fresh first time, which is normally a reasonable run. Then they feel the effects of the run normally, but you're trying to get a second run and the muscles and their body feels the effects. And the next run is a little bit not that, not that good. So you, they, they lose a little bit of form in the second run and you think, well, oh, they're, they're not too good. It's not the fact, the fact is that they're actually just getting fitter and by the time the third run comes they, they, they either surprise you or they run well. Guys that have been in the game long enough know that the third run is probably the best run. A lot of trainers say they don't worry about the third run um, but you look at their horses and it's normally the third run coming into the big race. There are upsets but uh, generally speaking uh, in those races if you've got top trainers, top draws, top jockeys, horses on the up. Um, placed correctly in the weights, those are the sort of things that you have to have to take take serious notice of. The first thing I would look at is the jockey and the trainer, especially for big races like the July. You go for the uh, top trainers, they normally got good horses and then of course very important is who they've acquired to ride their horse. You know, if you got, we're not going to say from the bad jockeys to the good. Um, be only as good as the horse can be, but Anton Marcus, you know, he will always take a good ride. Um, uh, 
Richard Furry, uh, you know, he rides for Justin Stay. And then, of course, the draws, you know, the draws are important, but the July is quite a distance, it's a 2 2, I think. And uh, Dynasty won from an outside draw. Um, does play a part about the middle of the field, seven, eight, nine, ten is good draws in the July. A lot of the jocks don't like to be drawn one, you would think why but uh, they prefer to be drawn a little bit off where the pace can be on. So yeah, the draws, the jockeys, and the trainers on a big day, people like Sean Terry always get the horses right on a huge day. Uh, Justice Dave will have his horses right. And uh, uh, Dean Canema are never somebody that can uh, uh, be left out. Yeah, so I would look at your top boys. Uh, mostly all those horses are nice horses, you know. Uh, Draws, jockeys, and trainers, that's what you're looking at on big days. <laughs>